right, and so this is the K1 Max. So if you like the K1, you will love the K1 Max as it is quite large and build volume of 300 by 300 and 300 tall. We've got a glass door that magnetizes in the front, a glass door on the top that completely comes off. It's like a panel. And so you're gonna use this when printing hotter temperatures. We got the filament detector on the inside. Right under that, we can see the temperature sensor for the enclosure, large motors, for the XY, core XY configuration for the whole system. We got metal linear rails, double on the X and singles on the Y. One thing you wanna remember is you gotta keep these lubricated, which the grease does come with the printer. We can see the RPTF heat tubing coming from the detector. We got a chain here carrying wires to the direct drive hot end. So this is Creality's latest, greatest. It works very well. Got a lock and lock for the extruder. Large parts cooling fan here in the front. We also get LiDAR and a ceramic heat block. There is an enclosure fan, also filtered. Here's our bill plate, quite large. PEI sheet and it is removable, magnetizes and flexible. Very large parts cooling fan on the side. Right on the top behind this logo there's a LED light with good brightness. We got three lead screws for the build plate, very stable and they are all tethered together on the bottom with the belt. You can see we got a silicone insulated heating pad, the frame with the board underneath, our Z-axis motor. We'll get this really cool little breakdown of different filaments and what speeds to print out and temperatures, things like that. Very nice solid build construction, metal and this really nice glass door in the front. The display, it's very bright and easy to see and quite simple to operate it. We got a USB port here in the front. These are extension feet and they're smaller feet underneath. Clean panels on the sides. Looking at the back, we can see here our PTF tubing going inside. A little drawing here showing the PTF tubing needs to be kind of having a smooth curve. If you need to make some slack, you can. This is our back panel. It's plastic. Got a nice honeycomb look. Here's our filter here on the back. You can actually replace this. And it is carbon. There's little carbon balls inside. You can see our fan there. Going down here, we can see the spool holder. And below that, here we got an ethernet port if you want to hard connect it to your router we got the manufacturing label here and on the very back here we got the on and off switch it is fused and this is where our power comes in all right so here i got the k1 and the k1 max together and you guys can kind of see the size difference the max is definitely quite a bit larger and obviously does take more room on the table and our print volumes are quite different also which we have about 220 220 by 250 I think and that's 300 squared so yeah quite a bit larger they are very similar we've got tinted plastic sides glass door that's magnetic same way on both on the top on the max we got a glass cover and it's got more like a flat design and on this one here we got a raised plastic cover that's actually magnetic and the reason it's raised because it accommodates this chain which houses the wire and our PTF tubing and our filament detector here is in the back and the backs are pretty much the same we've got the spool holder here we can see on the max we don't have the filament detector there because it is inside on the back. So I don't know if I like that better or not, but it does seem to work well and never had to go in and try to, you know, put anything through. So yeah, other than that, very similar design structure and hot ends are identical also for the most part. A big difference with the Max is we do have a LiDAR here. Not too sure exactly everything it does as it's probably more upgraded for the future, which the regular K1 does not have. We've got an external fan, same here, except this one here has a filtration. It'd be more specific carbon filtration you can change the filter on the back side same type of build plates this one's very large and they are both flexible magnetic sheets smooth PEI with a magnetic mat underneath on the max we also have this little drawing here and I think that's for the LiDAR we have the same external parts cooling fans on both machines going back to the build plate this is the K1 if we look underneath it's just dark and the heating element is kind of incorporated into the plate on the K1 max we have a silicone heated mat on underneath that heats up the bill plate. So that's quite interesting. And maybe the K1 Max actually uses AC heating. Another cool thing about the K Max is we do get a little graph here of all the different filaments and what speeds and temperatures to print out. Same screens on both of them. USB-A here on the left side. Same rubber feet that are add-ons. My K1 was the early model so it didn't come with a camera but the Max is a later model and it has the camera installed. But you can't add it if it doesn't come with yours but all the new ones now do come with the cameras. But yeah that's pretty much the biggest difference between the two. Operationally they're the same. We do have an LED here also on the back side 
and the one on the max is the same size as this one so it's a little bit dimmer in here than it is in here as the light output is the same but they're both very quick printers and they both have exactly the same print quality overall there might be a small difference but it's very minute I do prefer the max better obviously as it is a lot more versatile because of that larger print volume so the Creality Hyper Series filament is really good for fast printers, kind of like this K1 here. And this is how they come in in this kind of box. Here we can see we have the gray color and there's a little window to see through. The roll is made out of kind of like a cardboard. Here we have some of the specs including up to 600 millimeters printing speed. So I'm going to print out a pretty cool print which is called the Moon Palace. All right, so let's take a closer look at all the prints that we printed. So this is the first Benchy. As you guys can see, it looks pretty good. So I decided to print another one in black. And this is the one that came with the printer. And we can see a lot better what's going on here. And yeah, lots of good control for the speed that we have. That gash there was actually me taking off the brim. But yeah, a little close to the bed maybe, but actually pretty good. And overall, very, very solid considering the speed and how long it took for the super fast benchies, which is what, 15 minutes, 16 minutes. So yeah, here's another thing that was with the printer and this is like a calibration cube, I guess. On the bottom, we can see what the bed is like. It's smooth, very nice. So we got the X. Of course, there is no real X, Y, but we can still see what the sides look like. And we've got some kind of cone shape here and a squared off cone, the top, so yeah, very nice actually. And this didn't take long to print either, like 20 plus minutes. So for the next part, I wanted to print my own calibration cube sliced in the Creality Slicer. What we have here is the three profiles. We have quality, normal, and fast. And we can see how the X looks like here. And if you guys notice, the normal one here, which is in the middle, seems to be the best. And the reason I say that is because the quality one took 27 minutes to print, the normal one took 12 minutes to print, and the fast one is 10 minutes. And we can see the fast and the normal, kind of a big difference there. And the quality is just not worth it. There's too much vibrations for how long it takes. So yeah, normal is definitely how I chose to print everything on this printer at 0.2 layer height. So here we have the normal and the fast. So they look pretty identical especially here on the flat wall and the other flat wall then we got the bottoms there and the tops which look quite identical but overall the normal one does look better so yeah I chose to print everything else in normal let's check out this little froggy I love to print these as they're pretty intricate details here especially around the paws yeah, this thing turned out beautifully. And again, this was printed very fast. And some of this film is just normal PLA like this. It had no issues whatsoever printing at high speed. And this is a tricolor, which we have three colors. Kind of changes as you rotate it. Very cool filament. Amazing print here. Here we can see the same kind of tricolor print. And this has more smooth surfaces. A little owl here. And yeah, the layers are very nice. You can kind of see it slight layering, but still very beautiful. Very minimal vibrations and ghosting. So yeah, great print. And the printer puts the layers down absolutely perfect considering the speed that we're printing at. And our last tricolor print here is this little vase here. The bottom looks great. We can see here a little bit of discoloring from the speed. Seems like it was going too fast here or faster and then it slows down and it becomes nice. So that probably needs to be adjusted. And the filament coloring is a little bit off as it shifts. You guys can see, but that's just the filament. As far as the layers are, you can see by the reflection. Very nice. Great print here and that's our Z seam. So let's check out this articulating print, which is an octopus, has many legs. And by the way, everything stuck very easily and popped right off. And this octopus did not take long to print. I don't remember the time exactly, but it was very quick. And as you guys can see, it's very nice. So yeah, 
Again, the Creality K1 is extremely capable and the Max especially being a large size or a large build volume is quite incredible what you can print if you do want to go larger. This print here is actually pretty cool and was printed out very nicely also. Everything's stuck. All the pieces are loose and functioning and all the teeth up front here are not broken and everything's perfect which a lot of times the teeth do mess up and by the way we do get these really nice snippers with the k1 max so let's go ahead and see if we can open up this mouth there we go seem to be opening up a little bit stuck but yeah it does open and it does work very nice so yeah very good accuracy and even if we look inside the mouth there kind of just everything looks great. So here we have a pretty important print as this is called a gear and this is a functional print and it tests the printer how good it is and it printed just like that. It looks like it was a little bit off and that's actually one thing I've noticed is that sometimes the offset is not always perfect as I think there might be a little blob on it and when it does probe it seems to go farther away a bit. Still the bed stuck even being kind of farther away and everything is good here and right when I took this print off it just spun right up no problem just like that which is incredible it is a little bit more on the looser side but still very very accurate and just shows that the printer is extremely capable with any kind of functional mechanical prints like this that are in many different pieces that have to all work together so that just proves that there's great accuracy and to reiterate that we have this print here which is kind of crazy looking it's also printed in rainbow filament which changes color so this is like an engine with some pistons here and you're supposed to kind of hold it here and turn it and the pistons turn and you got a gear here that turns by these teeth here so it is a little bit all on the looser side so maybe it could be downscaled for better connection especially here between the teeth so like laying down it works more perfect and then standing up as the teeth over here tend to drop a little farther away but yeah other than that it's perfect print basically so it shows that we have plenty of good accuracy and most importantly it's printed round which is the hard part same thing for this gear it's extremely smooth and round so here we have a really fancy bear and this also is printed in the tricolor filament and you guys can see how cool that looks it changes colors as you go around so yeah lots of retractions here and there's still a brim here on the bottom that I need to peel off but you guys can see it turned out really really nice almost looks like something you can put in some very nice store as a display but yeah excellent print even on high retractions like that so over here we have the legendary moon palace i haven't really printed this much but with this printer here i decided to do it in the hyper gray creality filament and you guys can see it turned out really nice so this is like a moon that's cut out with the palace inside so i did use some brim to make sure it sticks and if we look on the inside, you guys can see there's practically no stringing. And by the way, I did bump up the retraction to one millimeter as the 0.8 did have some stringing, very fine one, and the 0.1 just made it go away. So excellent details, excellent quality for the speed. And I think this took only about six hours to print something like that which is not so bad for this really complex model here so for the next part we're going to get to some higher temperatures which we have abs here these wheels it's like for a rc car and it prints face down and you guys can see we have a little support there let's see if we can pull that out all right so it comes out pretty easy yeah pretty clean so face down it looks all right there's a few gaps here and there but not bad at all and as far as the print itself very nice so this is abs we did preheat all the way to 100 on the bed and 260 for the nozzle and the chamber inside got to 52 so yeah very stable and looks very nice now the real test is this thing here and it printed just like this and this is actually also an ABS guys and what's incredible is that there's a lot of different pieces here that needed to stick and they all stuck and what's incredible is how well it turned out being a functional print also printed in ABS so this is like some tracks here and they're actually functional so yeah very cool I was not expecting for this to be a success but it was and even though we do have pretty good tolerance it looks like we can scale down on this thing everything is quite loose 
So that just tells me that not only is the K1 good at speed, but also in closed high temperature printing, ABS does an excellent job, as you guys can see here. So yeah, very impressed with that. Now, one thing I wasn't so impressed with was TPU and specifically not TPU itself, as it has no problems with that. But the problem that it did have is in spiralized mode. So this is like a little rocket. And I'm not sure if maybe my settings weren't all right, or maybe it was too hot. So it kind of foamed out or what, but this is the result I got. And it is TPU, you guys can see it's bendable. I can completely fold it. But there is gaps or like, I don't even know how, like under extrusion maybe? Something strange going on. And I'm not sure exactly what happened there. But either way, it does print TPU, just not so great here in spiralized mode. Now, the other spiralized print is here. And this is just one layer all the way around. And you guys can see the rockets kind of falling apart. And this was the maximum height that it could print. So yeah, overall, good. And we didn't really have any issues with spiralized except for it did seem to not stick so well and it breaks really easy as you guys can see. And also there was gaps. Yeah, not too sure. I think maybe spiralized mode is not so great on the K1. But as far as our walls and everything, they look really nice overall. Well, there's a little bit of vibrations. Not so much ghosting. Yeah. Pretty good. But yeah, I guess that's one thing that is maybe not great is the spiralized printing. But other than that, everything else performed very well. And I was very pleased with the higher temperature printing and kind of makes sense as the enclosure helps a lot. So as you guys can see, the K1 Max is very capable and having such a large build volume that's enclosed makes it an all-in-one printer and can tackle pretty much 99% of all the projects with this kind of setup. I love the build quality. It's very nice. It looks more like a piece of furniture, glass panels, top and bottom and then we've got sides and it's all tinted looks really cool the camera inside is nice because you can see how your print's doing anytime the lidar is definitely awesome but as its only ability at this point is to detect objects so if you were to start a print and something was on the bed it would see it and not proceed i would like to see a little more advanced features in the future for the lidar especially for flow calibrations and filament quality and as the k series just gets started i'm hoping to see a lot more updates the printer is actually pretty quiet when all the panels are closed even with the fans on but if you open the door or the top panel it does get pretty loud and again that's mostly from the fans and not the mechanical movement so in my opinion it's definitely worth the upgrade from the k1 if you can muster up to the max as the larger build volume really makes a big difference of what you can print and if you guys are more interested in the details i did a pretty comprehensive video on the k1 which is practically the same thing going over pretty much every detail so yeah check that video out so if you are interested in the k1 max or the k1 i'll have some links in the description check it out and i hope you guys enjoyed this video if you did then hit that like button also check out the playlist i'm sure you'll find something interesting there and stay tuned for more as i have more 3d printing videos coming up so as always thanks for watching and i'll catch you in the next one peace